Hey everybody, Graham here uh, from Smarty Pints just showing you guys my setup. As you remember from my earlier videos, I had a setup in the garage with a uh, simple setup with kegs, three kegs, one mash, one hot liquor tank, one boil, and I did fly sparging with two pumps, I had quick disconnects. I still have the high temperature tubing and the rims tube and the rims tube. So, um, I have gone through a lot of transitioning with my stuff and I finally found something that I really enjoy and I'm going to break it down for you real simple. What I use and how I go about my brew day. I still use the rims tube. As I said before, you guys have seen the rims tube videos. Some people have asked me what I use the rims tube for, if I use it for both mashing and boil, or if I recommend boil with it. I don't recommend boil simply because, well, let's take a look at it. The, the rims tube is such a, has such a small space, and your pot is going to be three to ten times larger than this. So depending on if you're doing five gallons, if you're doing 10, 15, 20, oh, who knows how big. This guy I would only recommend for mashing. It would take you forever to even boil, and even if you hit that temperature, it's not that safe, I don't think. I wouldn't recommend it. So just stick to mashing. Um, if you want to boil with electric, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm not on propane anymore because I moved it inside, obviously. You could do a couple things. You can go with the boil coil, which I have here. This is the outlet for it, the plug-in. And there it is down there. You can see it attached to my wall right there. You could also um, install your own. I've seen people install two elements. I've seen people install one big 240 element. Uh, it really depends on the power that you're going to be supplying it with. If you're doing two elements, I'm going to just guess that that's two 120 elements plugged into two outlets. I uh, controlled somehow by some controller. I would not just stick an element in there and just let it go because you have a chance of scorching your wart and other... Uh, it's just not safe. You need control in order to have a nice stable boil. Well, that's the other thing, boil overs. That's, <laughs> I gotta say, I love this electric brewing because it helps me control my boil overs. It was so easy to control a boil over. All right, so we got the Boilermaker G2s for both. Uh, when I ordered them, they gave me the option of getting the G1s, but uh, you had to go through a ding and dent sale through certain retailers. So if you want the G1s, you can still get them. It's limited quantity from what I understand. Um, just search online for G1 Blickman, Ding and Dent, and you should be able to find something. Otherwise, if you want Blickman now, you will just wind up with G2. On my mash, you've seen, if you haven't seen, I posted a video on how to install the false bottom for the G2. So I'm not going to go over that because... Um, it's in another video. I will tell you that on my mash I pay attention to my thermometer and go by this thermometer um, when I get close to my set temperatures because this thermometer will vary from your probe setting um, and you want to um, just pay attention to this. Make sure this is calibrated uh, by putting in some ice making sure that it's at the right reading for when it's in ice water now, what I did was I put a T fitting at my output because with the temperature controller that I have, they gave me the um, option of putting a T fitting a probe um, on the mash. Quick disconnects for the probe. Here's the probe inside here. It goes to about right there. And then on the other side, I've got the tri-clamp fitting. This guy goes, well, I've got him underneath the table. 
And he goes up to my controller. And I'm going to unplug the pump here. Okay, spin him around. It's the high gravity EBC SV controller. Now they give you the option for a second pump on this one. I only do one pump because I'm not doing fly sparging. Um, your heat control is here for power. You turn that on, it'll turn the element on. It'll also turn on your controller unit. Your pump needs to be on at all times when you have the heat turned on so that way that the heat is distributed properly. Otherwise, this is not accurate. If you don't have this on, this will give you a false reading, plus no pump and just the heat on means that your wart is just going to be sitting inside the rims tube and you're going to have a problem. <laughs> so, uh, I like this guy. I've got uh, two outlets here. The second outlet is for the second pump switch if you ever have it installed. And this is the input for either your rims tube power supply or your boil uh, power supply, which is the boil coil for me. Another neat feature about this controller is the dial. And I'll just swing this around. When you read the paperwork that comes with this guy, it's, it's very limited paperwork because it's such an easy contraption. They will say when you're heating up your mash to be either at half or no power when you get this out of, either way, this is off, this is full power. There's a, a mark here. That's your that's your marker for the power setting. So this is full power. You're gonna have it like that when you're trying to reach your set temperature, or if your wart is already in your boil kettle, you're gonna have it on full power to reach your boil. Now either way, you're gonna to want to monitor that temperature very closely, especially for your mash. When you get close to your set temperature, you're gonna to want to back that down to either half or no power, depending on how close you're getting. And if you're getting really close, you're going to want to kill the power and then slowly bring it back up. Otherwise, you're going to overshoot. Now, if you overshoot, that is not a problem. Don't freak out. You still have a, a certain amount of time. Um, not all the enzymes are going to become inactive if you overshoot your temperature right away. So just kill the power, wait for it to cool down, add a little bit of cold water, and then slowly bring up your power again until you hit the designated temperature that you want. Um, now for your boil, this dial also comes in handy because you'll be at full tilt boogie to reach that boil. And once you heat, once you see that hot break about to happen, back it down real fast. Just go zoop, and then, uh, then crank it up just a little bit until the boil starts rolling again. The hot break will happen and then you can go back to full, full tilt boogie again because you won't have to worry about the boil over again. You could also back it down when you're adding your hops, because when you add your hops, you could have another boil over, so there's another option for you. For the rims tube, I rigged up a new element. It is a uh, 240 volt, uh, I can't remember the, the wattage exactly, it's anywhere between 3500 and 440, or, um, 4400 so um, that's what I got in here and I've got it hooked up with uh, I believe 10 gauge wire and oh, make sure that if you do go with this power power uh, controller that you get the right kind of plug it's the same kind of plug as the uh, boil coil so just make sure you get the right kind of plug and you'll be okie dokie. So that's how I have the power hooked up to my rims tube and my boil coil. Um, probes I have for output here. And then I just put it about halfway up on the pot there. 
And what's really nice about these new vessels is um, that they tell you that the sight glasses help you with understanding stuck sparges. And so if you have if you have your output cranked open too much, and if you have your pump open too much for the outgoing, um, you'll notice that on the sight glass, your level will all of a sudden start to drop down. And if that happens, that means you're sucking down the grain bed, and you don't want to do that. It means that your flow is, is wrong, and uh, you need to fix it. And when you fix it, it'll go right back to where it needs to be, and it'll just sit there as it's redistributing. And same goes with when you're transferring. If you're transferring, your volume will go down too fast if your flow is too fast. And it'll be just right if uh, your flow is just right. So um, another thing that I like about this setup is I put onto my pump here. Um, this is the ingoing for the mash. This is the ingoing for the boil. So mash and boil. See, hooked up to there. And then this is the outgoing for the boil. Now, the outgoing for the pump can either go to the rims, which of course I've got the gasket here. So I have that all hooked up and clamped with that clamp. Or attach it here when I'm transferring. Either one. It's nice. I've, uh, I've only done one brew on it so far. Really enjoying it. I wound up with 79.6% efficiency on my first run. Be interesting to see. And that was, that was a really big stout, so I'll be interested to see what I do with the lighter beers. So that's my setup. Any questions, please let me know. Thank mm -hmm. you.